32 core AMD CPUs could be on their way. So could a PlayStation 4 handheld from Sony. And don't worry, Microsoft Copilot Plus computers are here. You don't have to wait for them. It's Oh, they're so much better than Apple. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your bright host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Tuesday, May 21st, 2024. We're gonna start off today talking about some details that are coming out about AMD's Zen 6 CPUs, which should be launching sometime in the next little bit. Zen 5 still hasn't made its debut, but there are still some rumblings coming out about how Zen 6 exactly is going to work, and that could potentially be by cramming 32 cores onto a CCD. Thanks to the fact that there's been a bunch of processing that's been shrunk since the original launch of these Zen processors, you can now cram more and more cores into a single setup. It used to be that you needed to have four core CCXs on a CCD in order to get the 3950X, and then it got upped so that you could have a few little more than that. Back with Zen 3 was four cores per CCX, then Zen 4 was eight cores per CCX, but only one CCX was used, which is what we're currently on right now, and we're anticipating that the next generation Zen 5, what's gonna be launched later this year should be about the same, but Zen 6 might up that to be 32 cores on a single CCX, which could potentially mean something like the 10950X. If AMD decides to continue with that naming scheme, they might go with something like the AI FASC chip, because that's what they're gonna wanna call it. Could potentially have 32 cores and 64 threads on a single desktop chip. And then once you scale that out to being on Epic or Threadripper, you can get up to 256 cores, which is just mind boggling. We're gonna be able to continue to have cores and cores for days. Impressive stuff. It doesn't look like much is gonna change for right now. This is a very early rumor as things are starting to swirl up regarding what we're gonna get potentially next year. But I'm here, I'm excited for it. More core count, higher core count, faster speed. That's what we're all about here. And I'm all about going to Computex next week. So let me tell you about today's video sponsor because it's great for that. Today's video is sponsored by Protoarch in their XKM01 LX portable wireless keyboard and mouse kit. The XKM01 LX kit is designed perfectly for travel. Coming in a hard shell carrying case, the XKML1LX includes the foldable keyboard and mouse combo, a USB-C hub, a 65 watt three port charger, a type C data cable, and a charging cable. Pretty much everything you need to set up an on the go workstation in one kit. The keyboard itself is a compact 105 key layout with 12 shortcuts and even a number pad. And with the built in rechargeable battery, the board is capable of delivering up to 150 days of usage from one full charge. Connecting everything is the included six in one USB hub equipped with a 4K HDMI port, a 5 gigabit per second USB-C port, two 5 gigabit per second USB-A ports, and a 100 watt power delivery in port. Expand your device's connectivity, expand your display in high resolution, and gain high speed pass through charging. Lastly, keeping everything ready to use is the three port 65 watt charger. This compact and foldable charger is perfect for keeping your phone, tablet, and USB-C notebook charged and ready for work. Overall, the ProtoArc XKM01 LX kit is a great addition to your mobile workstation. And you can use the code linked in the video description to save $36 off for a limited time. Pick one up for yourself via the link in the description below. And as always, a huge thank you to ProtoArc for sponsoring today's video. And another thing I might be able to take on the go with me is Sony's potentially new upcoming handheld that's supposed to just be for playing PlayStation 4 games. That's gonna be great, or potentially even streaming in PS5 games. This was actually a rumor that started right around the time that the PlayStation Portal came out, that the Project Q, which eventually became the PlayStation Portal, was not the only handheld that Sony was working on and that they were actually working on something like a PlayStation Portable behind the scenes. And now there's new details that this could potentially be hitting the store shelves maybe late this year or even potentially sometime next year and that they are going to have a new PSP that the launch lineup is just PS4 games, which is something that I have been wanting for quite some time, taking a look at the power and the performance of the things like the Steam Deck or the RG Ally. You easily get the graphical capability of a PlayStation 4 out of those chips. And so running PS4 games on the go makes a lot of sense for Sony. A lot of people were disappointed in the PlayStation Portal because it didn't have that additional functionality and this could potentially pave the way for that to happen. Or it could potentially be worse than that because there was a new job listing that was found where Sony is looking to hire some ARM architects to potentially build out a new device for them where a lot of people were like, oh, PlayStation 6 is gonna be based on ARM or the thought is that they're gonna make another handheld that's based on ARM, which means that they're gonna have to emulate everything for the PS4. It couldn't actually be run natively, or they might just cloud stream it all in and you, uh, it's worse than the portal. You can't, you can't even do remote play. It's all streaming from the cloud, which 
I wouldn't necessarily put it past Sony to do something weird like that. And Intel didn't want anything to get past them yesterday because there was the big Microsoft event, which we're gonna cover in a little bit. But just to make sure that everybody's still thinking about Intel, they discussed their stuff. So you, you're not thinking about Qualcomm and Snapdragon and Microsoft as much. You're thinking about Intel and Lunar Lake because that's gonna be coming out soon. They get, they're they gonna launch that in Q3. They made sure that everybody knew about the extra performance, the, the higher power efficiency, the more AI tops that you get in Lunar Lake. It's gonna be so much greater and it's on track for a launch in Q3 with Arrow Lake being the desktop chip is still on track for Q4 with them saying that there's gonna be update for these desktop chips over at Computex, but you can see Lunar Lake here has got 45 tops plus for the NPU, 100 plus tops for the entire platform. That crap that Microsoft was touting for their Copilot Plus PCs, 75 tops, pathetic nonsense. Intel's got the Lunar Lake chips with so much more. It's gonna beat Meteor Lake by quite a bit according to all of Intel's number. And there's a new version of Thread Director that should be on Windows to help make it a little bit more efficient for directing what's going to the P cores and the E cores. And they said GPU wise it should be about 50% faster than Meteor Lake, which is going to be great for things like handhelds or anything that you're trying to do when it comes to gaming on these little chips. But we're looking at 30% lower total package power than the Ryzen 7 7840U and 20% lower than the Snapdragon 8CX Gen 3, which was not the chips that Qualcomm was showing off, the Snapdragon Elite X, the, the slightly different. So comparing apples to oranges here, obviously Intel releasing these slides as Qualcomm's coming out with their devices, they don't have them for comparison in the lab. So we'll also have to see how these hold up to things like Strix Point APUs, which are supposed to be launching at Computex. Intel jumping the gun to make sure people are still thinking about them, which is exactly what Apple did when they launched the M4 chip, being like, hey, we got tops too. We got 38 tops. Look at our tops. We're topping so hard here. And I want Reese to top you off with some deals. Yo, welcome back to Yifty Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. Hope you guys are doing well. And hey, look over here. Jingle, jingle. There's deals. Starting off today, we have the Deep Cool Assassin 4 Premium CPU Air Cooler for only $84.99 with the include promo code making it $15 off. But then next up we have the AMD Ryzen 7 5700X 3D back again, but this time being price matched to Micro Center's price at $204.98 making it $44.02 off. And then lastly we have this gorgeous Samsung M80C 32 inch 4K smart monitor with a webcam for only $399.99 making it $300 off. And hey, with that the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, and you're back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. All right, we got a big deal to go through when it comes to Microsoft's announcement yesterday at their Future of Windows event where they talked all about AI. Baby, you better believe it. This is all about the AI revolution and what it potentially means to you. Number one, they launched Copilot Plus PCs. This is a fancy new branding that's gonna make sure you know that your PC is capable of running AI. It's got all of the good AI things. And the first computers that are gonna be Copilot Pilot Plus PCs are those that have Snapdragon X Elite and X Plus processors from Qualcomm, and they're saying that it's 58% faster than the M3 MacBook Air. Suck it, Apple, with a whole bunch of devices coming out from Microsoft in their Surface lineup, as well as Lenovo, Dell, Acer, Asus, and HP having their own Copilot devices for people to pick up. Additionally, with all of this, Windows 11's getting an upgrade. It's gonna remember everything that you do. And by remember, I mean it's going to log it, and then it's gonna use a nifty little feature called recall, which will allow you to verbally or textually search for anything you've ever done on your PC and it will pick it up. That one thing that you saw that one time that you can't exactly remember the name of, well, you just kind of get enough words into the search engine for Copilot to pick it up and it will bring it up for you. It is logging everything you're doing on your PC so that it can be searched up in the future. There is no way this can be used for nefarious or weird reasons. Kyler, huh? what am I gonna find on your computer? Additionally, Microsoft's gonna be adding Copilot to a bunch more programs within Windows 11, such as the settings menu or file explorer, or it can respond to notifications. Copilot can do everything. Why do you even need to use a computer anymore? Copilot is the computer user. Additionally, Microsoft announcing their own physical hardware devices. The Surface Pro is getting an OLED, so it competes very well when it comes to something like the iPad Pro, except for it's gonna have a fully fledged operating system, which the iPad obviously 
limited by iPad OS. It's gonna start at $1,000. You can potentially upgrade it to an OLED display and it's gonna have those Snapdragon X processors. As I mentioned, again, the Surface Laptop gonna be faster than the MacBook Air, start at that $1,000 price point and potentially have up to 22 hours of local video playback when it comes to its battery life, which is fantastic and good numbers, high numbers, much better. Preliminary benchmarks from what I'm seeing with the Snapdragon PCs that are out there because several other YouTubers have gotten their hands on them for review appear to be quite good, impressive, especially in the battery life side of things, but we'll get more detailed comparison of these things as time moves forward. But again, just, I wanna discuss this for a second, especially when it comes to the Copilot Plus PC requirements that Microsoft is having here. You need to have at least 40 tops of NPU performance, 16 gigs of RAM, and 256 gigs of storage. Qualcomm has 75 tops overall, but at least 40 tops of NPU performance. So things like the upcoming Strix point APUs. They're supposed to have 45 tops thanks to the XDNA2 AI accelerator. But while it's all neat that like these are running on NPUs and NPUs can definitely be helpful little chips to help you run some concurrent AI tasks, the truth is, and I think Nvidia hit the nail on the head here when they talked about this a little while ago, is that if you just have like a basic gaming laptop, anything modern in the RTX era, 2050, 3050, 4050, uh, you're fine when it comes to your tops performance. Like your NPU, yes, is technically offloading some of that, but it's nothing compared to a, a decent graphics card. So like an RTX GPU can get up to 1300 tops. We're talking about 45 tops with these little CPUs, but then your GPU is obviously able to do so much more heavy lifting. And then especially, these are NVIDIA benchmarks, so take them with a grain of salt. But when you have a 4090 laptop, that's beating a MacBook Pro with a M3 Max, the highest that they offer on the MacBook Pro. The 4090 is beating by seven times. And then a 4050 laptop is beating that by two times. An RTX 4050 is a mightily capable AI chip when it comes to just doing anything that an NPU can do. And that's one of the, the weird things that I'm having trouble understanding and I've, I've done a little bit of reading into this of like what exactly is an NPU doing that you can't get elsewhere and the truth is especially since Nvidia has been pushing tensor processing on their RTX chips the NPU is baked into the graphics card. There is some talk about like, it might be slightly more efficient than just using the tensor processing on a GPU, but not by a, a supreme degree. It's not an amount that's getting you twice the battery life because using the tensor cores on an RTX 4050 is not the same as you activating the CUDA cores at the same time and taking 100% of the power draw. The tensor processing on the GPU is just gonna be as power efficient as it is on the MPU on the CPU. So it's it's like this weird thing where like you're double dipping, but let's say you have a last gen Intel processor or AMD processor. You've got the 7845HX. Technically, that doesn't qualify to be a Copilot Plus PC because it doesn't have 40 tops on its CPU, but it freaking has way more when you put it, the graphics card in it. It's totally capable of running all of that. It's just not addressed to the MPU. And that might be an operating system level thing where Microsoft's really trying to have things addressed to the MPU specifically. It's a weird marketing move here where the GPUs have been fully capable at doing all of these AI tasks for very long. And now CPU manufacturers are adding a little bit in, but like just, just use your graphics card, especially if you're plugged in. But while I can uh, issue all of the NPU tops conversation, one of the big things that Microsoft did talk about, which wasn't the main thing, like when Apple transitioned to their own silicon, they talked a lot about how they're gonna make all of the programs run really well when it comes to being on ARM. Microsoft kind of had this as a side note, but they have rebuilt Windows 11 to work better around AI and ARM chips. They've got a new emulator, which is named Prism, and they have a new kernel, a compiler, making it so that you can run x86 and x64 apps much faster on these new Snapdragon chips, which is kind of what we all wanted to see. Is ARM on Windows going to get better? And it looks like it is. Microsoft's putting a little bit of investment in making this happen. However, we have seen this before with like Windows RT back in the day as more prolonged testing is going to be happening with these Snapdragon laptops that are going to start making their way out to the world. We're going to start see some more like minor frustrations, some more niche 
edge case issues that are popping up and we can kind of see the limitations of what this new Windows 11 transfiguration means for everybody. But, but all of this will be available in the latest June 18th update that's gonna be coming to Windows 11 in case you wanna take advantage of all of this yourself. So you just have to wait about a month. So let me know what you think about all of Microsoft's transition to AI and ARM down below in the comments while I read what you left yesterday. Over on Floatplane, we got Jimmy Cav saying, FSR and DLSS working in tandem? What madness is this? 40 years of darkness, earthquakes, volcanoes, the dead rising from the grave, human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. Kyler, can you say who you gonna call? Do I have to? Come on, man, it's for the old people. They really like pop culture references from the 80s. Who are you gonna call? Ghostbusters! <laughs> then over on YouTube, we got Adam McGuire saying, still gonna call it Twitter. No money or law will change that. No, you're absolutely right, but I, you know what I'm suspecting will change it? Time. People are just gonna give up. I understand the opposition to calling it X. I kind of am in stance with that. I know that many a thing that was once protested succumbs to time and people just forgetting that they were upset with it and uh, slipping it in ironically. And then it becomes unironic and then it just is the way things are. And then we got Inkscape tutorial saying, iPhone Twitter, what an unexpected crossover. Hey, I said iPhone X, I saw the joke, I had to take it. I thought it was hilarious personally on the inside. Then Mr. Nagless saying, who TF? cares about phones being one millimeter or less slimmer as a top feature, especially when the camera bump is only increasing. I'd much rather have a chunk of your phone without bumps and with bigger battery than this literal removal of things you can put inside. People who buy them, that's who, who wants it. I, some people like slim, thin, light things, man especially with their devices. I mean, there's a point where things are too heavy and then there's a point where like things are, you didn't recognize how much better it could be once it's lighter, but I, I don't know. I feel like phones have kind of peaked in terms of their physical design aspect. I, I don't know how much more change it could happen, but maybe, maybe I'm just a visionless cad who can't see anything good for what Apple's trying to do for my life. Then we got Charlie saying, GPT has lied to me so many times and it just randomly makes up stuff to trick you into thinking it's smart. Oh man, I wish that were true. I wish that I mean, on some level, I, I, it, it would be better this whole AI wave if these things were thinking for themselves, but that is not what's happening. It's not trying to lie to you. It's not even making things up. It's just a word prediction program. It just predicts what's supposed to come next after the word it says. It's like tapping the center little button on your keyboard to just generate words over and over again, but it's just trained on so much data that it gets it mostly right most of the time. It's not lying to you. It's not making things up. It's just wrong. <laughs> like that's that's what it is. It is it is an algorithm that spits out the wrong output based on the input. Large language models kind of have their inherent limitations when it comes to what they're going to be capable of doing and that's why everybody's looking for things like AGI, artificial general intelligence that's actually capable of thought. And I we're not there. We just we got the AI marketing stuck. That's what happened. Large language models and machine learning, those are both things that have existed for quite some time. Once OpenAI came out with ChatGPT, people called it AI, it stuck with AI, people give their money to AI, 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 oh. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. Thanks. And I'm gonna stop the marketing of my mouth. Here, we'll be back here for more of the hottest tech news tomorrow, my friends.